December 12th. Oh, you look so skinny! I'm headed back to Milwaukee. My mother is thrilled. I just want you to be happy. Oh, hi, Patrick! Fate that we cross paths. Fate for Kate. I'll just leave you two boys to it. Ben Lewis, Blake Lee, and Fran Drescher. Life is short. You see something you want? Go after it, honey. The Christmas Setup premieres Saturday, December 12th at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime. 24-7 holiday movies all season long. Okay, I know I said this about the last movie, but I want to see this movie too, but I did already get to see it. You guys are going to love it. It's amazing. Um, let, let's just jump right into this. I, I'm so happy you guys are all here. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk to Ben Lewis and Blake Lee, Chad Connell, Fran Drescher and Ellen Wong. Welcome, everybody. Hi. Um, right off the bat, you know, I'm, I'm of the LGBT community. I love the fact that Hugo being gay isn't the main part of the story. It's not, it's not a coming out movie. You see how people are reacting to it, but it, I just love what it did. Um, ben and Blake, talk about that a little bit as far as these characters and them being really comfortable in their own skins, which we don't always see in movies, any kind of movies. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Hugo is 100% comfortable in his own skin, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to do with his sexuality. Um, I think, you know, I've been thinking about this and like, I feel like Blake and I are very privileged like in our lives and in our community to not feel, um, you know, amongst our queer friends, but also our straight friends. Like we never feel different from anybody else. We never feel othered. Um, and it's really refreshing, I think, to have a movie that sort of, um, takes that POV, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because we're very privileged to have that. Not everybody in the LGBTQ plus uh, community does. And so I think um, I think this movie really celebrates, uh, you know, you see a lot of movies that are about sort of the, um, the difficulties of the coming out experience or discrimination or, um, and those are certainly valid, uh, valid and important parts of the gay experience, <laughs> but there's also so much joy to it. Um, yeah, the fact, I think the fact that like the, the story didn't have, it doesn't, it's not surrounded in trauma. You know, these characters are celebrated by their, their family and their friends and the community. And I think that that was a nice, um, it, it was really nice to read a script about an LGBTQ story that is like celebrated in that way. Ben, ben, talk about Hugo a little bit. What's his life like outside of when we meet him? What's his work life like? And what's what are his goals as far as that, that, you know, may change throughout the movie? Right. Well, at the beginning of the movie, I think he's just like, he's, he's, he has tunnel vision, right? Like all he wants is this promotion at work. Uh, he's putting in, you know, 70 hour weeks. The previous Christmas, uh, he had spent working at the, at the law firm that he works at in New York. Um, and he's just very driven in terms of his career. And I think that his uh, social life has sort of uh, taken a hit as a result. Uh, so when he goes home uh, for Christmas in, in the movie, um, I think he really, um, as often happens in these movies, uh, sort of reevaluates what it is that's really important to him and uh, what he really wants out of life. And I think he does that through reconnecting uh, with his family and, um, and also reconnecting with his uh, high school crush, who's played by Blake. Okay. What, what do you think the characters see in each other? What attracts them right off the bat and kind of pulls them in? Well, I think for Hugo, his initial attraction to Blake's character, Patrick, in high school um, was based on the fact that uh, Blake's character was out in high school. Um, and, uh, and I think Hugo was not in that uh, place yet, was not ready, was not comfortable enough with his sexuality at that point, and I think was very inspired and attracted to that um, in, in, in Patrick. And uh, I think that kind of confidence and self-assuredness uh, is something that, uh, uh, that he's still finds himself very attracted to, you know, 15 years later. Yeah, I feel like there's, um, you know, it's obviously a physical connection at first, you know, when they see each other after so many years. And as the movie goes on, you realize that there was this mutual, you know, crush and attraction back when they were in high school. But I do, I think it's, I think it's a sense, you know, as we, as the movie goes on, that it is this, this sense, this fight for, um, for further change in their community and something that they both want and that they both are uh, looking forward to being a part of. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think it's like my character Patrick is already involved in it and is, you know, helping lead this community in that direction. And I think sees that Hugo can do so much as could could do so much to help and uh, hopefully we'll do it with him. Also when um, Patrick sees Hugo for the first time in many, many years, I'm wearing a very sexy tool belt, <laughs> which I think uh, was a big part of it, mm-hmm. big part of the attraction. That always helps. Um, <laughs> Ben, when you found out Fran Drescher was playing your mother, what was your first reaction? I mean, hi, Fran, by the way. Um, <laughs> love to see her face. Uh, I was so excited. I mean, when they first told me that that they wanted Fran for the role, I was just like, Fra- this, uh, not everybody knows this, but Fran and I have the same birthday. So my entire life, she has been my celebrity birthday twin. And when, and I knew that our birthdays were gonna be right in the middle of shooting. So to me, just the idea of like celebrating my birthday on set of a movie that I'm starring in with my husband and I'm celebrating my birthday with Fran Drescher was like too good to be true. I was like, there is literally no way that that is going to happen. So when I found out that she was actually going to do it, it was, uh, it was such a thrill. We're such big fans of hers. Um, we were before and now, now to, to know her is, uh, I mean, is to love her. We're, we're... We also st- spent the entire uh, cor- we had a quarantine when we were when we got to Canada where we shot the movie, and so we uh, we thought it was a good idea to freshen up on the first three seasons of the Nanny. <laughs> well, Blake, Blake actually didn't think it was a good idea. He was I, like, "If you watch too much of this show, you're going to be very weird, weird when yeah. you meet her." <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm going to be weird regardless because I'm a fan." But well, Fran, Fran, talk talk about playing this role. Um, you're you're perfect in this role, but also it's a role where you could come off too overbearing and a little too much, but you don't. But how do you how do you find that? You know, so you it's all about love, but you don't want to be too heavy. But talk about that. Well, I first of all, I love that the uh, movie celebrates love as love, and and normalizes, um, you know, uh, the diversity of the human experience. Um, so for me, having two sons in the movie, one straight and in the military, one's gay and an attorney. And uh, either way, it's as normal as having a kid with brown eyes is a beautiful thing and important to show that to uh, the American public. And then, you know, I mean, I, it, it was very liberating for me to be pried out of my house after five months of being in lockdown, crossing the border with my pup, my work permit, and my COVID negative test, <laughs> and starting a movie. And we were very insulated because we were all living in the same building, and uh, we kind of just hung out with each other. And then the crew all wore masks. And, you know, it was funny because me and Ben and Blake, when we saw a picture of our hairdresser, we were like shocked because <laughs> we never thought that was what she looked like. <laughs> we never saw her face, you only saw the mask. Yeah, it's very bizarre because we do a whole movie, including the director who we, you know, uh, off hours, he came to our, um, me and Ben's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> So we got to see what him and the uh, producer, executive producer looked like, but uh, for the most part, we never saw the faces of any of the crew. And it was a very strange experience for that reason, but we all got tested like every other day and I felt very safe. And I was very grateful that I was pried out of my cocoon and thrust into the world, even though it was, you know, with many precautions and stuff. And from that point, I was kind of like the animal let out of the zoo. I went (laughs) to my apartment in New York. I went to visit my parents in Florida. And now I'm finally back in California and still, thank God, COVID negative. Great, great. And now your your character is is a matchmaker and likes to, and draws these two guys together. But I want to know is Fran Drescher a good matchmaker? Have you have you oh, matched some? No, no, before? no. I'm very successful in this movie. In real life, I'm the worst. <laughs> I, I have never had the success that my character has had in the show, and it must be so nice. I've heard from people that uh, you know. Uh, oh, uh, you know, I set them up and now they're married. The closest one that I think I can take 
some credit for is Dan Aykroyd and Donna Dixon, who I ended up doing my quarantine in Canada with. And they're very dear old friends of mine. And we all met on the movie, Dr. Detroit. And uh, Danny would always say to me how much he liked Donna. And I kind of mushed that into happening. And then they came over to Peter's and my house, for, Peter, my gay ex-husband, and my uh, house for dinner one night. And on our front porch upon leaving, uh, he proposed to her. So maybe I had a little bit something to do with that. That's a good story. Okay, I think that's a success. Um, that's awesome. Uh, Chad, Chad, I want to talk to you now. You know, th there's kind of two love stories happening for you in th with this project. Um, but first, talk about your character with Ellen's character, Madeline, um, and what, what draws him to her. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, you know, to a certain degree, that element of comfort. They, they've known each other for years. Uh, she's been uh, Ben's character's best friend forever. Uh, and so there's that sort of just ease. Uh, you've gotten past the first meeting and all that. Um, and he's come home, he's spent many Christmases away, he, he's uh, in the military and has, has his time to reconnect with his family. And, uh, you know, he, he's finding love and home with somebody who feels like he's already part of his family, you know? Yeah. And is it, and what's the person, there's a personal connection, I think, with the project with you. Yes? What do you mean? Is there, <laughs> I thought, is, is, isn't there somebody that you knew, that you know in this project? Well, outside of the movie? Uh, so, I mean, I have worked with, uh, Pat was our director, I've worked with him. Ben and I have been really good friends for what, Ben, like 12, like 13 12 years, years or something? Yeah. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, uh, and so, you know, I, I knew it was Ben and Blake uh, who is in these roles before uh, I, I think I, before I was even offered the role. So when I, when the offer came in, I like jumped at the chance to work with old friends. Um, you know, I knew Ellen was a good friend of Ben's and, and then Fran just sort of helped round it out. And just to point out, like sitting here, listening to Fran talk about like, so I, introduced Dan and his wife and that's what every day on set was like <laughs> so it was easy to maybe like fall behind schedule just a bit <laughs> uh -huh. great yeah. storyteller yeah yeah best great Ellen I'm going to jump over to you um talk about your character and you know it's I feel like every gay man has his best girlfriend I know I do <laughs> um is that is that is that a stretch for you to play that kind of role not at all. I mean, I'm friends with Ben in real life and Blake too. So there we go. But I wouldn't be the Christmas setup if, you know, Maddie didn't also get set up um, by the very matchmaker herself, uh, Kate Spencer. So I think it's a very, it's the perfect thing to have uh, two setups go on because I mean, it wouldn't be called the Christmas setup if it weren't for that, right? Yeah. What, yeah. what do you what do you think draws Maddie to Aiden? What what's the spark there about? I think it's you know what Chad was saying. It's the familiarity and also like Maddie's been best friends with Hugo for so long, and she already feels like she's part of the family. And I think it's just this, you know, in my sort of little backstory was probably she had a little crush on him growing up. Uh, but never really said anything. And here they are both as adults. They haven't seen each other in years. And uh, there's that little spark and it just, it feels right. And uh, then you have uh, the mom, Kate, nudging them and it just, you know, it's inevitable. <laughs> For anybody that wants to answer, you know, I know if I had seen a movie like this 10, 20 years ago, I, I would have just fallen in love with it. And it feels like it's taken a while for these movies to come out with LGBT characters at the forefront. But what would you all have thought if you'd seen a movie like this, you know, 10 or 20 years ago when we weren't seeing characters like this? I think we're realizing- we different people today, I think, right? Yeah. I, I think I'd that... love to think that I looked at it with the same eyes I'm looking at it uh, now. You know, I, I've, I've done a number of these sort of like Christmas movies. I love doing them. Uh, and I was like so pleased that uh, the central storyline was not me and Ellen, 
uh, we exist, but we're the, the movie celebrates Ben and Blake. I mean, in a way, both in real life and in the movie. <laughs> but uh, but it's 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 not hammered. It's not. Uh, it, it's a rom com before it's uh, an activist piece. You know. Yeah. Anybody else want to weigh in? Well, I, mean, I think that oh. you know. Uh, uh, I, I'm the oldest one here <laughs> and I've kind of been living this relationship with the gay community for decades uh, in a very familial, joyful, um, you know, easygoing, mutually accepting, loving relationship. So uh, it's nice that uh, television is catching up to the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. But television has, you know, except for that one little window and during the Norman Lear years of the 70s, other than that, it's always been kind of behind the times, mm -hmm. misrepresenting America and kowtowing to, uh, you know, sponsorship fears and different pockets of America that may not be um, as uh, understanding or open-minded. And, you know, that's, that's uh, perpetuating the problem and um, being part of the problem rather than the solution. And I think one of the silver linings of this current administration in the past four years, which systematically broke down our nation and divided us as a people in such a negative and hateful way uh, that the special interest groups, and there are many, women, people of color, immigrants, gays, I mean, kids in school, you name it. Um, well, they've awakened from complacency mm -hmm. and uh, have taken to the streets. And so um, because of that, I think that it's, you know, it, the, the uh, various networks that, you know, have the courage to say, this is real, this is happening, this is now, and we want to represent it, are actually in step with the times and the 21st century. And so bravo to them. And, uh, you know, now let's get on with um, being happy and healthy and uh, accepting everybody for their uh, unique and beautiful uh, qualities. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think this movie's gonna make a lot of people happy and feel good, so that's what I took from it. Um, but I, I wanna put something out into the universe and let's hope some Lifetime executives are watching. I want a sequel. Anybody up for a sequel? If, if just another one? Anyone? Anyone? I've been pitching storylines for weeks. <laughs> we're, we're all like, you know, we loved doing this project so much and we would all jump you know, to do it again. I think I think it's really important to us to, this was just a door that opened for the, you know, LGBTQ plus uh, community. And I think that what we would hope for is if we were lucky enough to do a sequel that there would be more representation within the community, trans people, non-binary people, you know, gay people, people of color. color. I yeah. think that it's very important, you know, to tell those stories as well. So hopefully if we were lucky enough to do it that, you know, we could represent in other ways. Okay. I don't know why we're thinking small with a sequel. Let's talk series. <laughs> <laughs> I like where you're going, Chad. I like it. Um, I, I always we're going to get to Q and A. Um, we have a couple questions from people watching in just a second. I'm always curious when you when you shoot these movies. I know it's not around the holidays. What did each of you do to kind of get into the holiday spirit outside of being on the set? But were there other things maybe some of you did just to get in that spirit? I mean, I'll take any excuse to listen to Christmas music year round. Um, and, and it I, was it, getting colder while we were there. It was, it was, yeah. You know, wardrobe gave me a puffy jacket to put over my costume, but I was walking the dog in it constantly. Yeah. Which, which <laughs> she stole, by the way. She stole it from I saw her yes. it. I asked and I got permission. <laughs> I don't want to steal. Um, Ellen, did you do anything to get into the spirit? You're, you're 
So. Did I do anything? I mean, just being in this movie was enough to get into the spirit. I think that's what brought me in. It was, we shot this in September and literally showing up on set and seeing all the holiday decorations, the fake snow, wearing like cozy, warm costumes, like that was it. That was okay. Christmas. The, yeah. ta- the town that we were shooting it in, uh, which is Almond, Ontario, is sort of like a Norman Rockwell, like Christmas painting. Very Courier and Ives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I remember on uh, our first day at that location, driving, uh, driving there, and this was in early morning in September, and there was a house that had a Christmas wreath already on it and some decorations up. And I was like, oh, that must be the, I guess that must be the location. That must be the house. And it wasn't. It was just somebody's house. It was like it, the most festive little town um, you could ask for. Yeah. So immediately, like, I think being there and being in, in uh, the location was sort and of- we shared meals yeah. together. We had cheese and crackers and pasta. <laughs> we went out for Italian food for me and Ben's <laughs> birthday. It was a real celebration. It was really love- lovely and loving. Fran was very good at like creating a sense of family. You know, she played the mom, but she also out, you know, behind the scenes was our mom. You know, like we would, she would have us over for, she was like, my door's always open if you need anything. He <laughs> loves doing lovely. his Fran voice. Because the rooms that the apartments we had didn't have regular phones and I was so, landlines and I was so scared. I wanted to know everybody's apartment in case, God forbid, something happened. And I found myself in my apartment where, and my phone wasn't working. I come knocking on their door. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we yeah. more knocked on your door is what happened. <laughs> well, I, I Brad was of always questions. cooking and having us over. So it was, it. we were going there. We got Montreal bagels and yeah. uh, Ellen, I, I, I just finished the batch of tea Ellen gave. <laughs> oh, okay well when you well, shoot the sequel I'm, I'm, I'm coming when you shoot the sequel because i need to get in on some of this um, <laughs> we're, we're gonna jump to q a we have a lot of questions for you guys for everyone what's your favorite holiday movie uh fran i'll start with you what's your must watch movie for the holidays well i i love uh, miracle on 34th street that's a good one chad how about you uh a christmas story Good, good one. My, yeah, my family, like every year, 24th of December, we all sit down and rewatch it now with the next generation. That's awesome. I also Ellen, love that you? love actually that the other actor said. I love that movie. Yeah, that's a great one. Ellen, do you have one? Um, I wouldn't say this is the one that I watch every year, but I actually just watched it recently and I think it might be back into my top list, but uh, Family Stone. I just really love how genuine the relationships are and authentic they are. And it just is like, you just feel like you're really part of um, a family that is true to life, you know? And, um, and I love the relationships and the nuance and they're just all, all the characters are so great. Okay. Uh, Blake and Ben? Oh, well that, it's funny because Family Stone was one that we actually sometimes use as like a tonal reference for this movie, just in terms of like the dynamics. And I think that the chemistry that um, luckily we actors had, but I would say growing up, probably my favorite Christmas movie was um, The Muppet Christmas Carol. (laughs) Um, I pretty much love anything Muppets, everything I learned about um, comedy, comedic timing, I learned from Fran Drescher and The Muppets. Yeah, I'd say uh, for me, Home Alone is a, a go-to every year. I have to, I have to watch it. It's so good. Okay. It up. Yeah, those are all great. Um, we have a question for uh, to Fran. Fran, so not a surprise, you are Jewish. Uh, you you filmed this Christmas movie as Kate, but in real life, do you celebrate Christmas or do you celebrate both the Hanukkah and Christmas? What do you what do you celebrate yourself? I celebrate anything that makes me happy and has a good spirit to it. So I, 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 abs- I, I really, I celebrate both. And, uh, and I celebrate other things too. I mean, whatever is positive and uplifting and gives us an excuse to be in gratitude with our family and friends, I take it on. And, uh, and I love all the different, you know, uh, traditions to the celebrations. So, I usually, I mean, I don't know what's going to be this year because Thanksgiving was me and 
Peta, my gay ex-husband, and then my girlfriend, our girlfriend, Judy, was supposed to go to her brother, and he got the results of his COVID test being positive that morning and oh, said, God. don't come. So Judy ended up joining us, so we were three. Okay. And uh, I imagine we'll be a very tiny group like that for Hanukkah, which is, starts on the 11th. And then on Christmas, well, you know, I mean, I don't know. Do I get a tree if it's just me and the dog? <laughs> you do. Make happy. Yes. I yeah. already have seasonal greens that I bought and pines, uh, pine leaves and, you know, pine tree branches and things in the house smelling wonderful. So I'm definitely getting into the holiday spirit. And like Ben, you know, uh, once the Pandora Christmas music goes on, <laughs> it, does, it doesn't go off. <laughs> That's true. Um, last question uh, for Chad. Somebody wants to know, what what about doing the Christmas movies do you love so much? This I mean, isn't your first one. Like, evidently, I'm a Christmas geek. <laughs> it starts really early for me, and, like, my whole family is big Christmas geeks. Uh, so, yeah, any opportunity to have holiday magic in July or February or September like this one is, I'm going to jump at that opportunity. Okay. All right, well, everybody watching, the movie is The Christmas Setup. It airs next Saturday, December 12th at 8 p.m. on Lifetime. Ben, Blake, Chad, Fran, Ellen, thank you so much for all your time. And the movie's so great. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We hope you enjoy it. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye, guys.